Greetings from Professor Sumi, coming at you from California University of Pennsylvania via the power of the internet. This video presents a brief introduction to Multisim, the schematic capture and electronic circuit simulation software by National Instruments. When you first launch Multisim, you'll be presented with the user interface as shown here. Let's start with a brief tour of the user interface to get an idea of what all this is. At the top of the window we see a traditional menu bar, works like any other application, and then beneath that we see a couple of uh, toolbars, additional toolbars. We see the standard toolbar here with uh, typical new, load, save, print, uh, some of the functions like that. To the right of that is the main toolbar, some of the main features available in Multisim. On the far right is a view toolbar where you can zoom in out and view the full screen. Below that is a components toolbar which supports rapid selection and placement of common electronic components. Off to its right is the probe toolbar which contains a number of tools that can be used for troubleshooting and analysis of various points in a circuit, and the all-important simulation toolbar which includes the run, pause, and stop buttons. These are used to actually run a simulation of a circuit. Off to the right, down the right hand side, is the instruments toolbar which contains a nice variety of virtual instruments like the digital multimeter, a function generator, an oscilloscope. There's also a logic analyzer, a logic converter, various uh, instrumentation that one would normally have on the benchtop in a real lab. On the far left is an area called the design toolbox. Think of this as sort of a project explorer or project browser as it's known in some other software packages. This is just a place to create various projects, for example, design one, and associate all the relevant files and components of a project in this area. And of course, the main area is the workspace in the center. I also call it the schematic area, because actually if we zoom out, let's see, zoom out to see the whole page, it actually kind of looks like a schematic page. And we'll zoom back in to see the grid. The grid is used to uh, more accurately place components and tidy up your wires in your circuits, making them look neat and professional. Now, in this particular window, you see actually two pages. Design 1, this is page 1, which we're looking at right now, and page 2. You would not normally see a second page. I've already created a second page here to store a photo, an image of a circuit, a very simple circuit, that I'm going to use to demonstrate how to create in Multisim. Uh, this very simple circuit is an LED, so we have a battery going through a push button switch or an on off switch illuminating the LED. And of course, if you know anything about electricity, you know that LEDs operate at somewhere around 2 volts. And this 9 volt battery clearly is uh, way too many volts to power an LED. So if we actually look at a close up view of the LED with the light turned off, you may notice this little swell in this uh, heat shrink on the one side of the LED. It's actually a current limiting resistor uh, connected in series with the LED. So this is our goal, a very simple LED circuit powered from a battery run through a switch, which will eliminate the LED when the switch is active. So let's go back to our schematic page and begin building a circuit. We need our components first, so we're going to go to the placement menu under component, and you'll see the place component or select component dialog box pop up. Components in Multisim are organized into a number of groups. You can see initially it's all groups and we have uh, a wide variety of components here. Multisim supports a, a huge variety of components. So I want a battery first of all. I've got a 9 volt battery so that's actually going to be under the sources group. I can narrow this down and then select power sources and I have an AC power source here. I need a DC power source. There's our battery symbol. So once you have this one selected and you press OK 
your mouse pointer becomes a component placement pointer. So position it wherever you want and then click it to drop it. And it's over there. So now let's call up a switch which would be on the basic menu under switches. And again we get a large variety of dip switches and switch packs and so forth. For this example we need a simple single pole single throw switch as shown. So I'll press OK and let me put that guy up there. Finally we need an LED as our illuminator and that's an example of a diode. So if we go to the diodes family and then LED uh, we see a large variety of like bar graphs in different colors and uh, bicolor LEDs. We want a simple LED. Let's go ahead and pick red for example. Hit OK and place it. All right, at this point I'm done selecting components, so let me close this window and go back to the workspace. Once you have components placed in the workspace, you can click and drag them to a new location. So you can reposition your components in your, in your schematic uh, to your heart's content. You can also right click on a component and get that pop-up context sensitive menu I was talking about earlier. And here, for example, we could uh, flip vertically. We can rotate clockwise, rotate counterclockwise, and so forth. So that's a handy function to, to be able to reposition, reorient your components. So to wire up our diagram, every component that you place will have terminal nodes on it. And you'll notice as I move my mouse pointer close to the terminal node at the top of the battery, it turns into a bullet and crosshair. So if I click there, I've actually anchored a wire. Go over to the other end, click again, I've made a connection. So let me add another wire here to the LED and one more wire to the power supply ground. At this point I have a full circuit and I presumably could activate it. Well before I do that I want to make sure my battery is the right voltage. Remember this was a 9 volt battery. With the components you can also double click them and call up a properties dialog window where in the case of a power supply or battery I can select its voltage right here and change it to 9 volts. The other thing you notice on the switch is it says key equals space so for switches that you place you can actually again double double click pull up the menu you can select a key on the keyboard to activate that switch any letter A through Z, any digit 0 through 9, or the space bar. So every time I hit space bar on the keyboard, you notice the switch opens and closes. You can also just click on it with your mouse to open and close it. Okay, so far there's no LED lighting up even when I close the switch. Right, that's because I haven't started the simulation. So use the run button to actually start the simulation. And you can see that it's now running and we have a time counter in the bottom right and a message here saying that it's simulating. I also notice that we got a warning. No ground node was found in your circuit. So let's stop this thing and add a ground node that is a requirement for multi-sim if you don't want to get that message. So back to our DC power and the sources group I'm going to select uh, digital ground. I'll use a conventional regular ground here and I'll drop that onto my circuit, close the window, and then wire it in. Okay, so again, uh, if you want, you can right-click the simulation window, right-click and clear the results, and start a new simulation. No warning. Very good. So at this point, the simulation is running. All I need to do is uh, turn on the circuit, turn on the LED by hitting the space bar. no LED. LED does not come on. Alright, so for the keen visual observer here, you'll notice the LED ended up actually backwards because I was demonstrating the rotate. So the cathode of the LED must go to the negative side. The anode or positive side must go to the positive side of the power source. So let me right click on that and remember what I was saying about you can't make changes to the circuit when it's running. So all my flip and rotates are grayed out. So again, stop the simulation first, right click, flip vertically. And yuck. Normally when you change components like this, the wiring gets all messed up. 
So we can make some corrections here by right-clicking on a wire, deleting it. Uh, you can also click a wire to select it and then hit the delete key. So now that those wires are gone, I'm going to rewire this to here and this to the ground. All right, one more time, run it and hit the space bar to close the switch and the LED illuminates. One additional comment here for the Keen Visual Observer, you'll notice that we're still missing one component. Remember that resistor in series with the LED? Why is it needed? Well, right now we're trying to impose the full 9 volts onto the LED, which if you know anything about LEDs, will only operate up to around 2 or 3 volts. So what's going on there? Well, if you look at the probes window, I'd like to demonstrate something here. There is a watt meter, essentially a power meter. And so I'm going to pull that down here and I'm going to click that on a component like the LED. And this is showing that the current power flowing through this LED is 23.5 kilowatts. So if you know anything about electronic components, um, I've never met an LED that could handle 23.5 kilowatts for more than one or two nanoseconds, and at which time it become, becomes permanently damaged. So let's see if we can correct our circuit here. We need a series resistor, so I'll go to the resistor menu, place component, and go to... Uh, okay, it, it, what, okay, there we go, resistor. And it defaults to 1K. Here's our symbol for our resistor, but you'll notice as you go up and down this menu, you can choose any value from 0.001 ohms all the way up to 5 tera ohms. You can also make your own custom value by just selecting one and then change it. Change it. So uh, I'm okay with the 1K. I'm going to go ahead and select the 1K resistor. Here's a neat time-saving feature also of multi-SIM. If you have a component like this with two terminals on it, you can actually insert it into a wire just by moving it over the wire and clicking. So it'll save you a little wiring time there. As far as the value that I mentioned, if you double click this, here's where you can put in your uh, value for your resistance if 1K is not sufficient. So let's run this again. Uh, let's see, 92.3 nanowatts. Okay, that's zero basically, nothing. Oh, the switch is open. So let's activate our switch and now we see a much more reasonable 12.8 milliwatts. Okay, I'm going to delete the watt meter. I can right-click it and delete it and go back to just the circuit. Open that. It looks like the LED is still on. If I rerun it and pause, you can see it goes off. Now, chances are you'll be uh, needing to submit or, or maybe copy and paste this circuit into some other uh, window, into some other program or whatever, uh, by all means you certainly want to save it first. So let me walk you through a couple of uh, final steps. Once you get your perfect cir circuit done, you probably want to maybe label it. Maybe put your name on it. So let's place a text block, text, all right, so I can just click, let's say, right down here, and I'm going to type in simple LED circuit, enter JSUMI. Okay, and then just like many other components on a circuit, I can move that around if I like as well. So this is a nice way to put a comment, basically put a comment anywhere you want on a circuit. Finally, I'm going to hit File and then Save, or I can also hit Control S on the keyboard. Now, because I have not yet saved this design, it proposes Design 1, and it puts it in a default directory under your Documents folder. I'm going to call this LED Demo. And you can see my project is renamed now that I've saved it. One more very handy trick in multi-SIM. A lot of times when you're using multi-SIM, you may want a snip of the schematic window that you can go and put, for example, in some other document. There is a very neat feature on the Tools menu called Capture Screen Area. 
And with the capture screen area, you can call that up. You can position this around. You can uh, size it to whatever you need. And once you get it just right, you can copy it to the clipboard. Now, once it's on the clipboard, you could go to another application, for example, Microsoft Word, where perhaps you're making a report on a laboratory, for example, and then you can right click and paste that in. And you have this nice multi-SIM schematic graphic pasted right into your document. I can go to picture format, for example, and call up uh, border and choose a nice black outline, make it stand out, make it look really sharp and professional. So another good pointer for using multi-SIM. All right, that will wrap up this video on the brief introduction to multi-SIM. To recap, we covered a tour of the workspace user interface. We created a circuit by choosing components and placing them on our circuit. We demonstrated, we saw how to wire up various components on the circuit and we did a simulation, we did a little troubleshooting and editing of our circuit, made some corrections, we did some labeling, we saw how to save the project, and finally we did a screen capture to be able to have an image to use in other applications.